Hello to everyone. I've done, I think, about probably not far off 2,000 miles on the XJS now, including the 600 miles to bring it up to Scotland from Southampton. Um, it's been going quite well. There are, there are a few, there are a few jobs. It's probably never ending on a 32-year-old car. Um, today, though. I'm going to look at trying to get the brakes working a little bit better. The, the brakes do work, they, they stop the car. Um, I did another job which required to finish it, the, the back was off the ground um, with the car in drive. Now, I think one of the first things that I posted online uh, on a Jaguar forum, uh, I think the day that I got the car, was a question about how heavy the brake pedal should be. Um, it, it's not like really, really heavy, but it, it's heavier than it feels like it ought to be. Um, so we, we've had the the independent rear suspension out, changed both the rear calipers, um, along with the discs. So there was one piston stuck in each caliper, um, and they were bled properly. But um, the, the, the pedal effort hasn't really changed. It's still quite heavy to stop the car, but I noticed when we did that other job with the car in drive on axle stands, that it was almost at the end of the pedal travel before the back wheels stopped turning. Um, now, that was another thing that I've learned. The, um, in fact, I'll turn the camera around and then you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, here we are. This is a 1989, um, ironically named high efficiency. Um, you'll notice that it's lacking a traditional large brake servo. This is a Teves Mark III system, I think. Um, quite an early uh, incarnation of anti-lock braking. Um, so we have a large reservoir over above the, the pedal box, as usual. Uh, on most cars, the pre-HE, there's a large black um, drum-shaped uh, vacuum servo, similar to what you have in cars today. The Teves Mark III is quite a complicated beast of things. So there is no there is no vacuum servo, as you can see. In fact, there's no vacuum operation on the brakes at all on this car, even though they are powered brakes. What it has instead is this nitrogen-charged accumulator and an electric pump. Um, so fluids are incompressible, uh, generally speaking, or, or, or so incompressible as it makes no difference, really. Um, so in order to be able to store energy, we've got this nitrogen charged little ball um, with a diaphragm inside and the electric pump runs uh, when you start the car or after you've had so many pumps of the brakes and the pressure in the accumulator is discharged. This thing charges up to 180 bar so for reference typical tyre pressure is usually 2.2, 2 2.4 bar something like that serious pressure in this thing. Now, the general wisdom is that these things can lose about 10% of their gas pressure uh, per year. The car's 32 years old. There's no evidence of it ever having been changed. Um, and when these fail, your pedal can travel quite a long way um, before you get any braking. Um, and your effort definitely goes up. So I was thinking probably time to change the accumulator. I've got a new one. It's come from Simply Performance. Um, they are quite expensive. It's around £170, which that, that's the most expensive single thing that I've bought on this car yet. But um, I, I am passionate about being able to stop um, when I need to. So I've got the Jaguar Repair Operations Manual here. Um, there is the section in how to change the accumulator, it pretty much is just a case of unscrew and screw back on. The trick with the Teve system is that whilst it's not difficult, it has to be bled correctly. Um, there's a specific procedure to follow. We'll go through that in due course. Um, you're on a hiding to nothing if you try and uh, bleed this like a conventional system. Um, you'll just never get anywhere. So to avoid some frustration, we'll, we'll literally do this by the book. And, uh, yeah, see how we get on. Right, this is the new accumulator. It is, um, as I said, from Simply Performance. 
It's um, a direct replacement. They do advertise that it is uh, slightly larger in capacity and slightly different in uh, cosmetic appearance. Um, the differences, if anyone cares, the uh, original one has a, a Allen key socket head. The new one doesn't, but instead it has a hex head, hex head flange on the bottom. Uh, it does say in the repair operations manual here that you uh, remove the old one, discard the O-ring. Um, I didn't actually check um, if the new one came with one, but if I unscrew the dust protection cap, you can see this lovely little purple one just there, so that's a good thing. Um, the other thing before I get stuck into this, I suppose, and this is uh, the sort of typical level of planning that I apply to all of my DIY car jobs, is to... Uh, check if I actually have any brake fluid of the right specification before I take this to bits and then can't use the car. So uh, I'll go do that now and uh, then we'll jump inside and I will do the test, the diagnostic test, um, which the book says to, to do and we'll, we'll see exactly where we are. I haven't done it by the numbers before, although I, I do have my suspicions, as I said, for believing that the original one on here is uh, well past its best. Okay, here we are, obviously, as you can see in the car, with the ignition off. Um, so it says in the book to discharge the little atomic bomb there, that you pump the brake pedal 20 times, or until it goes hard. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I haven't done this by the numbers before. I did find that when we had the independent rear suspension out and we were trying to bleed it after refitting the whole unit with the new calipers that uh, no fluid would flow actually unless the ignition was on, um, which I thought was a bit odd, but um, I'm only really just now spending the time getting to understand how this uh, TEEV system works. So. We'll try the ignition first and just see if you can hear the pump running. My car's got an aftermarket immobiliser running, so sometimes the ignition doesn't work unless the door's closed and the seat belts are on. And this is one of them. That buzzing's the aerial. There we go. So here you can hear the accumulator pump running. Pitch is changing. And that's it tripped out. That was quite a long time, which would suggest the accumulator is maybe not as bad as I'm thinking, but we'll give it a go. So I should be able to get 20 pumps on the pedal. And I'll tell you when it starts to get firm. Right, one, two, three, four. See, the pump started running after about three presses there. And I should get more than that. Right. I'm quite pleased about this. Um, I've already read on jaguarforum.co.uk that um, if, the, if the pump starts running after a couple of presses, then there's there's nothing in the accumulator, basically. Or no, the accumulator's full of fluid, but there's no gas, there's no pressure. Right, so let's turn this ignition off. Now the pump won't run, and we'll try and get our 20 presses. One, two, three. That's it's stiffening up already. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Interesting, okay. Oh, look at that. I don't think it's supposed to do that. I've never seen that before. This car has a new quirk every time you try and do something. Right, we don't want brake fluid everywhere. That's not great for paint, is it? So 
So why, anybody watching that knows this Teve system, if you could post in the comments below, is this normal? If I start pumping the pedal, is it supposed to send all this fluid back to the reservoir? I honestly don't know what's normal and what's not with this car. But I'm sure somebody watching will be able to tell me. What a strange, strange system. Yeah. Let me know. And looky here. The reservoir has gone down again. That's interesting. So the accumulator there is now fully charged. The motor ran for some time. And yet I really would have expected that the back brakes would have worked far earlier if that was working properly. While you're here, or while we're here, I have noticed another interesting feature. This is a throttle capstan. It works the two throttle uh, butterfly valves, one here, one in the other bank. Um, in this case though, on the cable, there's this uh, little metal block inside. And when the accelerator pedal is pressed all the way to the floor, this block is supposed to travel inside the tube. And this here, if I can move that whilst you can see what I'm doing, That's the kick down switch. Interesting thing about mine, it doesn't kick down in the slightest. There's nothing wrong with the electrics, I expect. I think it's either got the wrong cable, or it can't be because that's all part of it. I'm not really sure what's going on. Actually, I need to investigate this a bit more. But the metal block certainly does not travel with the cable. And it doesn't even attempt to activate the switch. This is kind of frustrating. Um, the pump, the whole thing, moves and with the 8mm Allen key socket um, in the ratchet with a pole in the end, as much torque as I dare, um, it's just bending the mount. So um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this off without probably calling my dad. And ask him to come over and uh, I'll hold the motor <laughs> body still while uh, he applies the torque or vice versa. But uh, either way, frustratingly, it's not coming off tonight. But um, better that than getting it apart and not being able to put it back together, I suppose. So we'll continue this. In the meantime, um, I have, as you can see, taken the wheel off. Um, Quite some time ago I posted a short video, I think it might have just been on Facebook, I'm not really sure. Um, this car had a fresh MOT, um, allegedly, when I bought it. Um, how thorough that was, I guess, is debatable. Um, because after 600 miles um, coming home, I jacked the car up here. Uh, almost immediately the car was pulling left under braking and uh, I wanted just to have a look and see what was what but uh, this wheel had some uh, noticeable play in the bearing in fact you can probably hear it if I move this now so there's been a new bearing here for a while actually it wasn't moving too much and it wasn't getting any worse so I, uh, I took the car on the holiday to Orkney um, tire wear has been okay as well, but uh, I really want to get this done and especially if I'm going to be in about bleeding brakes and things, it seemed like the sensible time just to get ahead and do it, you know. Um, what I have noticed, if I can get in here just now, you can see there's really not a great deal left on these discs. There's actually a new set of pads upstairs, um, but I think in the spirit of this video, which has been abject failure if we're honest I think I'm going to park this up just now as well just leave it um, I'm going to go inside clean the old handies um, box of rubber gloves just over there I never remember them until I've got filthy already um, 
and go order some brake discs, I think. The good thing about this car is that parts prices are generally not that expensive. I mean, that stupid little atomic bomb thing uh, aside, most things aren't too cost prohibitive, actually. Even these big uh, four-pot calipers, look at those beauties. They're only uh, what, about 110, 120 quid each, new. Can't really complain at that. I used to have a TVR Cerebra before. Um, I think just a set of brake discs and pads all round was £950 just in bits. Um, not not fitted like a uh, all-in price or anything like that. So this thing's really not too bad. So where was I going with that set of front discs? They're about 45 quid. I checked the other night. So I will get that done. Um, yeah, and we'll, uh, I guess there'll be a part two for this video, possibly even a part three. It will depend how often the fuck up fairy visits.